Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again, and welcome back to my channel. This time around, I have a review of Zubuntu 1804.2, which is, as of the time I'm recording this video, the latest LTS release from the project. And I wanted to go ahead and give it a spin, so let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here I'm on the installer, and I've already went ahead and created bootable media and booted my computer from that. So this is basically what you see when you go to install it. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that right now. If so, I'll click install Zubuntu. I'll leave the language as default. I'm not going to connect to a Wi-Fi network right now. I'll just continue through this. And I'm not going to install the third-party software, although I do recommend that uh, for others, especially if you have proprietary media formats that you want to play, but I'll click continue. And I already have a, a different version of Ubuntu on this machine, so I'm just gonna go ahead and erase my disk to wipe it out. I'll click install now, and then continue. Choose location, New York is fine. It's close enough, same time zone. I'll go ahead and fill out this information here, and I'll click continue. So at this point in the installer, we do get a little slideshow that walks us through the various features and things like that. And this install is actually going by pretty quick. It started the process when I was filling out the user information and um, is actually almost done. All right, the installation is finished. So it took about two or three minutes to get the install done. So the install was finished in just about as much time as it takes to microwave a burrito. So pretty quick. I'll go ahead and click restart now. And I'll remove the media. Press enter. And we should start up in the actual installed version of Zubuntu. All right, so here's the login screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my password. The boot was very fast on this machine, but then again, I also have an SSD, so there's that. And let's log in. All right, so here I am. Now I've logged in. I had to manually configure my screen recorder. The screen recorder shows up as another display, so I have to configure that in the display properties here. So a quick note, guys, uh, this is my older, uh, laptop here. This is my lemur from system 76 and it's a great machine. It's an i7 it, Like I mentioned it has an SSD it has 16 gigs of RAM. So definitely not a slouch It's about three years old, but still going and I'm using this machine actually because my other laptop uses Thunderbolt for display and for whatever reason uh, Zubuntu doesn't support that now. I don't actually know why that is haven't really had a chance to uh, test that out I've used this release before but it's the first time I tried Thunderbolt and that didn't work. Now here you see on my screen, you're seeing the display settings, which I had to configure just to get the screen recorder to work. I will mention that I do really love this distribution and I'll get into the reasons why in just a moment. But one thing I don't love as much is the settings here for the display. It didn't automatically default to the highest resolution when I plugged in my screen recorder. I had to set that manually, whereas other spins of Ubuntu didn't have that problem. So anyway, I'll just go ahead and close out of this. And I get this message when I log in saying that I have incomplete language support. I'll go ahead and click right there and let's just go ahead and get this done. So I'll update. All right, so I'll click install, put in my password. This is going to set up language support for various applications, LibreOffice, Thunderbird, and so on. And we're good to go. All right, so here I am at the desktop, and before we get into the actual release itself, there's just a couple of things that I want to mention. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring up a terminal here, increase the font size there so you can basically see this more clearly. So let's take a look at the release. So if I cat Etsy OS release, you can see some information here uh, regarding this version. And as you can see, this is in fact 1804.2, which is the latest version of this LTS release. The reason why 1804.2 is significant is because of the new hardware enablement stack. What exactly does that mean? So the hardware enablement stack basically refers to a group of packages that provides hardware support or additional drivers for your hardware. With most distributions, 
The kernel and driver packages are completely locked and will never get upgraded until the next major release of the distribution. But with LTS releases from Ubuntu, the 0.2 and higher versions actually get a newer hardware enablement stack, which means if you install it fresh, on a brand new piece of hardware, you'll actually have a greater chance that it'll support your hardware than you would with the initial release. And that isn't actually specific to Zubuntu. Ubuntu is the same way Kubuntu, basically all the different spins benefit from this change. And here we can see that we're actually running kernel 4.18, which is newer than the one it shipped with initially. That's all well and good, but one thing to keep in mind is that if you already have Zubuntu installed, before 1804.2 came out, you will not be automatically upgraded to the new hardware enablement stack. You'll have to opt in in order to do that. And there's just a few packages that you can install if you're curious. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen and I'll paste the command right here. And it's wrapping a little bit, so I'll try to make that larger. But you see here on the last line where I have the sudo apt-get install, I just copied that from the OMG Ubuntu article that announced the release of 1804.2. And effectively, we're installing these two packages right here, which will also install some additional packages. And again, this is for those of you that are already running Zubuntu 18.04. If you are installing fresh from 18.04.2, you automatically have these packages and you don't need to do this. And I only recommend that you install the newer hardware enablement stack if you're having a problem. If your machine works just fine, there's no benefit to doing this. The only other benefit might be that the additional video drivers for your video cards, if you're a gamer, might make performance better. But again, if it's working fine, and if it's not broke, then may as well just leave it alone. I'll go ahead and close out of the terminal. So let's take a look around at the theme. So here I am at the default desktop. I haven't configured anything. I'm gonna open up the file manager, which is Thunar as a file manager. And the theme hasn't changed a lot, if at all. Um, there might be some minor changes here, but Zubuntu is not a distribution that changes quite often. They basically stick to the status quo. However, the default theme that they use is custom, and it's not something that you'll see if you were to install the XFCE desktop environment on a different distribution of Linux. They actually customize pretty much everything to the point where we have the panel up here at the top, we have the blue color scheme here, and so on. And if we go to the menu, our default web browser is going to be Firefox. There it is. I'll go ahead and close that. If you've seen Firefox before, same thing here. We got the latest version of Firefox. We have LibreOffice Writer for the default word processor. They are locked at an older version, though, at least one major version behind. However, uh, you could simply sideload a newer version of LibreOffice if you prefer a newer version. But this version works just fine. Also on this release, for installing new applications, we have GNOME software. So I'll go ahead and bring that up. And the reason why we have GNOME software here is because XFCE does not have its own dedicated software for managing applications. So it just uses GNOME software, which admittedly would be a little heavier than most applications, but you would only have this open when you're installing applications and, and you wouldn't keep it running all the time. So that really doesn't matter. But you can see that we have some popular applications here. For example, we have Slack, which is very common in the workplace. And there's other applications that we can install as well. So for example, I can click on games. And then we have a lot of games that we can install here. So you might be interested in some of these and definitely recommend you check some of these out. There's some awesome games available. And of course, you can also search. So if I go back to the main page and you know the name of an application you're interested in, you could just simply type it right here. So I'll type Steam. But here we have the Steam for Windows version. I'm not sure why that's showing up in the list. You can actually install the Linux version of Steam as well. But anyway, I'll go ahead and back out of there. We also have a tab here for updates. So if you have any system updates, they'll be shown here in this section. And uh, if you need to install them, then that's where you would go for that. So I'll go ahead and close out of there. Now with this menu here at the top, we have these applications, most of which I already mentioned as the favorite applications, if you will, but we have individual sections here on the right and we could check and see which applications are installed by default. So simple scan, for example, if you do any document scanning, I already mentioned Firefox, but we got Pigeon for Instant Messenger and the Thunderbird email client. We also have Transmission for downloading Linux distributions via BitTorrent. So Transmission is a good application for that. For 
multimedia, we have XF Burn for those of you that still use optical media. Yes, optical media still has a place today. We have the Parole Media Player available for viewing video files. And I already mentioned LibreOffice, so I'll skip that. And then you can see we basically have a fair number of default applications here. Now the thing about XFCE is that it's very light in resources, but it also doesn't change much. So there's not really a whole lot to talk about here in terms of new features, because with XFCE, it's status quo. It's not basically for people that want constant change. It's for people that want a fast, resource-efficient desktop environment that doesn't change very often. So with that said, that was a quick look at Zubuntu 1804.2. I find it to be a very good release. I'm not gonna talk much about its stability because you know, I haven't been running it that long, so I can't really speak about that. But I will say this, I've been using Zubuntu off and on for a very long time, and I've never had stability issues with it. So I really would be surprised if I had any problems. It's generally been one of the most stable uh, distributions of Linux that I've ever used. So there you go, guys. What are your opinions about Zubuntu 1804.2? Go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this desktop. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux, how cool is that? And of course they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.